order. Um, this work session is for ordinance number 25-2021, a one-time waiver of utility late fees. The suggestion for this ordinance came in from a citizen work group and a group of city staff reviewed the request and this ordinance is a result of that. Um, Susan is here and I'm gonna ask her to come up and kind of give you guys the background on this and answer questions. So she's gonna come up and help us from here. Thank you, Ms. Beverly. Uh, good evening, Council. Uh, as Ms. Beverly mentioned, uh, we have a, the first reading of an ordinance on the agenda this evening. Um, and it is regarding a late fee waiver. And you'll notice that it's a very lengthy ordinance, uh, but really the only things that are changing in this ordinance are the things, sorry, I gotta take that off, uh, are the things that are struck through or that are underlined. So uh, you'll see on uh, pages one and two, uh, the language allows for uh, a customer to request a waiver of the penalty due to extenuating circum circumstances if they had had uh, a 12 month history of no other penalties, no disconnection fees, no return checks, and no tampering fees. So basically they have to have uh, the perfect credit for the last 12 months before they can even request the waiver. Uh, it allows for the waiver to be requested every 12 months. So if I request it this month, then I have to be perfect on paying my bill on time for the next 12 months before I can request that waiver again. And it also states that uh, the waiver request has to be made within 30 days of, of being imposed the penalty. So to give you a little bit of background on that, um, there was a request that came to us from a group of customers. And Kevin Howard, myself, and Heather Powell Heather is our billing and collection supervisor. Uh, we discussed the request and we agreed that it is re reasonable. Uh, we get the request quite often. Um, life happens, you know, every now and then people, something happens and they can't make that payment on time, but they have been excellent payers. And honestly, uh, our hands are tied. We would love to be able to, to help these customers um, but because the way the ordinance is written, we have no discretion in that matter. So we would love uh, from a staff perspective to be able to help those customers. Um, so we agreed that it was a reasonable request, that it's easily implemented and that generally it's a good idea. Uh, so we put our full support behind that. Uh, the mayor agreed with the assessment, um, but because the late fees are established through ordinance, then we have to go through ordinance to get the penalty waiver as well. So that, that is why uh, it is included uh, through the ordinance. So uh, I have to give a lot of credit to Mrs. Powell. Uh, she did a lot of research to other utilities uh, to see what they were doing, to see how many other utilities offered this. Is it something that you know is, is outside of the realm of, of what we should be doing? And uh, it does seem quite common. Uh, so. She, she was able to, um, to utilize a lot of what others are doing. Uh, so I have to give her a lot of credit for that. She has put together um, a form uh, that the customers will fill out. If, if any of you guys wanna see that, a waiver request form that they will have to fill out, they will sign. Our staff will check their, um, check their history before we make the adjustment. There are two two staff people that are authorized to make those adjustments. So it's not, uh, you know, there are checks and balances, good internal controls there. Um, so I, I think we've, we've put a lot of thought into it uh, and I feel com comfortable that we can administer the policy uh, with high standards. So, um, you know, I think this is a great way to support those customers that regularly pay on time. Uh, those are, uh, those are the people that, that we depend on every month, uh, so we want to give back to them. So, questions? Susan, uh, does your computer have a field in it that carries that date? So, or is uh, you gonna track it manually? 
Uh, so yes, we will have to look at uh, each record individually. Um, but you know, honestly, I don't anticipate that we are going to get a whole lot of these, maybe a handful every month. So I don't think it's going to be very staff intensive. Yeah, I, um, I know, but is there a place in Springbrook that you can put a delinquent date? I mean, the date in the computer. Yes. To look at. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's not a manual effort. So we we already have a put it in, but not sort of a exactly it's a bill pay history so we sort of go through that process anyway um, if you have perfect credit within two years you will get your deposit refund back so we are accustomed to looking at that history and and looking at that credit report anyway so th this is uh, nothing beyond what we're already doing regularly Sorry about that. Um, this is for late payment only? Late payment only, correct. Okay. Uh, and it's once every 12 months? Correct. So theoretically, the, the person could next November do this again? Correct. Okay. And correct me if I'm wrong, are the late payers typically the same ones month after month? So yes, you do have those chronically late payers. Mm -hmm. uh, they pay, you know, every month. But there again, you will have situations arise where, you know, um, my husband was in the hospital or I was sick. A lot of people have been COVID, you know, have COVID and they can't get out to pay their bill. And, you know, we look back and you've had perfect history for the last two years. And I would really like to be able to say, okay, we will waive that. You've been such a good customer, we will waive that. My credit card company does that, mm -hmm. you know. So, because uh, life happens to, to all of us. Life happens, I'm, I yeah. agree. Um, the only problem I have with it is every 12 months, you know, I think it's a good, all right, we'll forgive you this time, but every 12 months. And do you have, um, any numbers on on how much money is collected in late fees yearly i do i do um so i knew somebody was going to ask that question <laughs> i think over the last five years uh, it averages out to about two hundred and thirty five thousand dollars which sounds like a, a lot mm -hmm. um uh, but really on a 13 million dollar mm -hmm. revenue you know, it's less than 2%. Uh, so the, and again, the majority of that is gonna be from these chronically late people, uh, not from your, your person that's late uh, once every 12 months. So, I, you know, I can't estimate how, how much revenue that would be lost, but, you know, just based on the number of calls we get, if it was, I don't know, three people a month, it, it would be pretty insignificant financially. Thank you. Susan, I know that's percentage, but could you give me uh, an average figure for what the late portion would be? I mean, is it $16 a month? Is it? Well, it's 10% on your bill. Right. So if you are a sewer only customer, you know, it could be as much as I don't know seven dollars no, it would as little as seven dollars it, it uh, gosh even lower than that two two three dollars if you're only okay uh, sewer only uh, if you are all three utilities you, you know it could be I don't know as much as seventy eighty dollars but and that's what I was thinking in terms of an average is there is there a middle of the road customer that you could average or is it, Everybody's so varied that you it, everybody is so varied. Okay. It it would be very very difficult to say that. Okay. Get John there. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. Now we're speaking specifically of people paying between the tenth and the twentieth every month, correct? Correct. Um, would it be worth considering instead of uh, looking at twelve months of history, just allowing everyone one basically one freebie a year that uh, if they pay if they pay late they can get one freebie a year then instead of having to look to see if they've had 
perfect history, meaning they've paid by the 10th of every single month for the previous 12 months, just, you know, if they haven't had cutoffs or something more extreme, then, you know, sometimes that extra $20 can make a lot of difference to our, to our citizens. And more specifically, who it typically would help the most are those people that often have to pay it on the 20th and they're paying in their extra 10, 15, 20 dollars a month and then once a month or one time a year maybe Santa comes and they get that uh, they get that fee waived. Is that something that would be worth considering? I think the council would certainly have the discretion to uh, amend the ordinance if that is something that you would a, a direction that you would prefer to go I think from a staff standpoint that would be a lot more uh, to administer I got a question when you get done go go ahead is the ordinance now the reason we haven't done an ordinance on this we have an ordinance stating that we got to charge late charges so we just redoing the ordinance okay correct yeah and and that that is on the advice well, of our city attorney the the ordinance clearly states that we will charge a late penalty so when, anytime we don't follow the ordinance we have to um, well this is off the subject but i've got to ask it anyway just a little bit when when we decided not to to charge credit card fees that was never an ordinance we charged credit card fees because i never remember it coming before it when we would took it off um, credit card fees convenience fee, convenience fee for using the, the credit processing card processing fee oh oh right so we're not that, not that doesn't ordinance. relate to this okay. ordinance All right. yeah. I'll say um, I think that the ordinance is what you guys have put in there is really good in that um, I think it definitely covers what the citizen group was looking for I actually do like the I understand John's point of just one time a year but I think especially with everything else we do in the utilities we use a, a payment history to kind of get those um, the deposit back and things like that um, and I, I also think that the number of people to to Jim's question of uh, being able to do it again in 12 months the number of people who will trying to think of the right way to say this the number of people who will need it again in the next 12 months yet have also paid on time for 12 straight months will be so small that it i'm not even sure that it's worth worrying about i mean um if somebody's going to continually pay their bill on time chances are they're going to continue to pay their bill on time the best uh, predictor of past behaviors or a future behaviors past behavior and so yeah. um, I think the way that you all have written this has been um, uh, covers what we're trying to do and I really uh, appreciate all of your hard work on getting it done could you do a 10 minute synopsis on controls I'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> I was like only 10 minutes <laughs> Susan knows I love talking about controls. <laughs> and he knows I love talking about controls. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, Can I just say something in response to John's from working there? Probably you can't comprehend how many people are habitually late? Well, I imagine it's a lot. I've been that person. Well, but what I'm saying is, but they've also been told if you have that weekly job, come pay us so much weekly so that you're not paying. I know from working there that we, and I'm sure they still do, try to work with people to set up like your bill is normally $200. Come pay us fifty dollars. All I just get paid once a week. Come pay us fifty dollars every week, or you know, a little bit every week, where that you don't have that big amount at one time. So I know they go out of their way to work with people, no matter what anyone says. They really do. But to go back and give everybody 
a one-time adjustment, you're talking about a lot of work. Yeah, and it would just be the opportunity for not right. not an automatic thing. But I was just looking at it as a as a point. You said there probably would be a few people a month that would take advantage of it as written, and you know we're writing an ordinance or correcting an ordinance for 36 people at probably an average of $15 a person. And if we're, if we're looking at it as what would actually help, help the people, the people who are habitually late are the ones where that $15, $20 once a year might make a difference to them. At this point, we're at 6.30, a little past that. Susan, thank you for the information, and uh, thanks to Kevin Howard and to uh, Heather Powell also for their work on this. So appreciate y'all. Rose, thank you. Um, at this point, it is 6.31, and I'll call the business meeting of the Berea City Council to order, Tuesday, October 5th, 2021. Madam Clerk, if you would let the record reflect that a quorum is present, at this time, I would call on Councilman Steve Cottle for the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Steve? Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this meeting. We thank you for the opportunity to come together uh, and do the, the business of our city. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings that are, that are in our city. Uh, it has been a very difficult few years for many people, but I think that you have blessed us with many opportunities to make this city better for our citizens and for everyone who visits our city. Lord, be with us as we go through this agenda. Give us the strength to make the decisions that we know are right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Steve. The next item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. By Mr. Cottle. Is there a second? Second. By Mr. Payne. Any discussion on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move to a voice vote. All in favor of the motion to approve the agenda, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. The motion carries and the agenda is approved. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. This is from the September 21, 2021 meeting and the September 29, 2021 special call meeting. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Motion by Mr. Payne. I see a second by Mr. Davis on the end. Any discussion on the minutes, corrections, or additions to those? Seeing none, motion is to approve the minutes from September 21 and September 2029. We'll move to a voice vote. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. The motion carries and the minutes are approved. The next item on the agenda is public comment. The public is given the opportunity to speak to the city council during the public comment portion of the meeting. Any public comments exceeding three minutes should be scheduled as a presentation to the mayor's office and will be placed on the agenda. When recognized by the mayor, please go to the podium, state your name for the record. Comments should be business oriented and we ask for no inappropriate language or naming of any person individually during comments. Business oriented is defined as any item of business on the agenda, including ordinances, municipal orders, and resolutions along with comments related to services provided by the city of Berea. And again, we ask for our comments to be limited to three minutes. Would any members of the public like to address the council? Any members of the public like to address the council? Seeing none, we'll move forward. Uh, the next item on the agenda, I had the good fortune during the Spoonbread Festival uh, to meet two ladies here here to present to us tonight. Uh, they are with Madison County UK Healing Community Study. Uh, they're a community engagement study, and uh, Carrie Atkins uh, is the community coordinator, and Abigail Broughton is the prevention specialist. Um, we know that uh, the keys to, uh, to trying to address the drug problem are enforcement, prevention, as well as treatment and rehabilitation, and they deal with, uh, with three of those, with the, uh, with the prevention, treatment, and rehabilitation. Um, I'd ask them if they would come and share their work, what they're doing in Madison County with the council and with the citizens. So ladies, if you'd like to come right up to the podium, 
Um, Mr. Terrell will show you how to how to get the mic hot, and we'll turn the floor over to you. Welcome. Sure. If, if you'll go ahead and set that up, and I'll ask Daniel to come out and give you a hand to get that set up. Okay. We've got plenty of and time. And if it's easier, I also have it on jump drive if it would be easier to plug it in. Um, Let me see if Daniel can come out and give us a hand. All right. Thank you. He'll be right out. I know I have been. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see what kind of plug you Um, I've got my charging port as well. We've got this one too. Okay. Well, that was easier than I thought. I was stressed about not having the right cord. <laughs> Technology is a wonderful and stressful thing. All right. While he's getting that going, I just want to thank Mayor Fraley very much for asking Abby and I to come and talk to you all about the Healing Community Study at UK and specifically what we're doing here in Madison County. I think it takes just a minute for the, the okay. projector to warm up, so. All right, again, um, I'm Carrie Adkins, and this is Abby Broughton, who uh, has roots here in Berea specifically, but I'm also a longtime Madison County resident, originally hail from Pikeville, up in the mountains of Eastern Kentucky. Um, Abby's got some copies of the PowerPoint presentation, and I'm just going to say Mayor Fraley gave me like a huge challenge of trying to condense all of this information in about 10 minutes. <laughs> so I will be going through these slides very quickly. Um, but there's printed copies and then I can send a electronic copy of it also to Mayor Fraley and he can distribute to anybody who's interested. That way you'll have all of the information in case you miss something. All right, so I'm going to put this in slideshow. Thank you. All right, so we already went through our introductions. Um, so if anybody isn't familiar with the Healing Community Study at UK, um, just a synopsis, it um, was funded in 2018 by the National Institutes for Health. Um, they released this funding opportunity to four states. Kentucky obviously is one and the grant is uh, housed at the University of Kentucky. We're also um, in the study with New York, Ohio and Massachusetts and involves a total of 67 communities um, in, among those four states. We have 16 in Kentucky um, for wave one and also wave two. So we're currently in wave one, and there'll be another slide eventually that uh, shows all of the, the counties. So um, massive grant, $354.1 million per year for three years and a possible fourth year. And what makes this study a little bit different, um, actually it is different, it's the first of its kind it is um, using a community engaged intervention to work with communities um, to be able to identify their needs, resources, gaps, and help pick out evidence-based practices that have been shown to work and make positive change in the area of opioid addiction. Um, work with those to implement those within the county. And here is someone who can uh, a couple of people who can give a brief synopsis about the study better than I can if I can get this to play. No. Uh oh. Okay. We got it. 
not currently available. All right, let me go back. So I have embedded videos. Um, it is not wanting to play. Uh, yeah, it's embedded, so I should be able to just click on it. And I've got a couple of more, which is actually embedded on the computer. Oops, sorry. So I shouldn't need internet. Again, technology is a wonderful and stressful thing. <laughs> take it out of slideshow if it would do. Because I just checked it before we came. Yeah, that's okay. If we can just get the video. Uh, my name is Alex Selswick and I'm the co-founder of Voices of Hope, which is a recovery community organization in central Kentucky. And when I was 18 years old, I was prescribed oxycodone when I had wisdom teeth removed. I got addicted really quickly. Eventually started using heroin in a syringe and ended up homeless in a few different cities and spent the very end of my addiction sleeping under a bridge in Dayton. Anyone who has seen the crisis that's happening in our country has to be deeply concerned about how this happened, how so many people have found themselves trapped in addiction to opioids. I'm Francis Collins. I'm the director of the National Institutes of Health. We're determined we're gonna turn the corner. And the entire time that I was addicted, I went through cycles of relapse and remission, relapse and remission. Every time I went to treatment, my parents became hopeful that this was gonna be the time that I was gonna do it. And every time I left, the treatment center called it a graduation, and they handed me a, a pamphlet with a list of 12 step meetings, and they said, good luck. To have any chance of ending this crisis, it's clear our nation needs all hands on deck. We've tried many different ways to try to intervene, and there are obvious places to do so with treatment programs, with emergency room management, but we haven't really tried pulling all of those together in one place to see what we could do. That's what this program aims to do. It's called Healing Communities. Today I'm pleased to announce this idea is a reality. We are making awards to four Healing Communities research sites. They will determine which combination of interventions works best at the local level, they will train and deploy people to implement them, and they'll monitor success in real time. Our aim is to cut overdose deaths in these communities by as much as 40% within those first three years and to create a blueprint about how other communities across the nation can do the same. I'm about six years in recovery, and I've been to more funerals than weddings. There's a funeral tomorrow in Lexington, Kentucky for a young man I went to college with. I'm sorry to say that heel came too late for him, but heals just in time for the tens of thousands of lives that it's going to save going forward. We know it won't be easy, but working together with our partners, we are convinced that healing communities can make a difference and find lasting solutions to this national crisis. Produced by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services at taxpayer expense. Gotta get that disclaimer in. All right. So now we know we have to exit slideshow mode to get videos to go. All right, so <clears throat> um, Voices of Hope, if you're not familiar with them, they are um, based out of Lexington, Kentucky, and they are also um, a partner with us on the Healing Community Study. Oh. There we go. Okay, so um, the study uses a phased approach that is guided by data, and we use three menus of strategies that uh, get what we call buckets um, that are um, evidence-based practices that we present to the community coalition that we work with in, in the county, in our case, Madison County, um, our coalition is a subcommittee of the um, I don't know why that keeps popping up. It's a subcommittee of the ASAP board. 
know what? We may just need to stay out of slideshow mode. <laughs> All right. So it's a subcommittee of the ASAP board. Um, and we also have um, our faculty experts, um, obviously the principal investigators of the studies, um, addiction experts within UK who are also um, a huge part of uh, the study. All right. So here's just a stair stepper visualization of what the phases are. Um, we started with the, the phase zero in 2019, which was the prep phase, and um, basically they were writing the grant at that time and collaborating with the other three states. And then we officially kicked off um, in February of 2020, forming our local coalitions. And skipping ahead to where we are now, um, we are currently in phase five, which is the implementation phase and monitoring phase. We're also kind of blending into phase six because we're starting to talk with our coalitions about sustainability of the evidence-based practices that we have put in place over the past year and a half. So what I mean by evidence-based practice is that is a practice that through scientific um, study and process has a database that will support those practices to show that they make a positive change. And we have, like I said, our three buckets. So the first one is focusing on opioid um, overdose prevention and education in the naloxone distribution, or Narcan. The second one is focused on medications for opioid use disorder, or MOUD. And the third is safer opioid prescribing in safe medication disposal. So menu one, uh, the OEND, here are some of our partner agencies um, listed. We have um, venues, um, partner agencies and venues for behavioral health and treatment centers. And as you can see, um, Behavioral Health Group is actually based in Berea. And if you don't know about Behavioral Health Group, they are one of the two opioid treatment providers here in Madison County. What most people would probably refer to them are methadone clinics, but we're trying to change some of that language that carries the stigma and call them what they are, which is an opioid treatment provider. Um, we also, um, we're pretty much partnered with most of the addiction treatment facilities agencies here in Madison County. Um, we're also partnered with uh, Madison County EMS. We have a, a leave behind program uh, that I'll get to in just a second. And we're also in the criminal justice realm in Madison County. We're partnered with the drug court, uh, the detention center, probation and parole, and we have um, a partnership that's the details are being finalized to work with pretrial services. So um, we have cards and I believe Abby passed them out. Some of you folks, you may be able to recognize the gentleman in the middle. That is uh, Sergeant Neal of the Berea PD. So all three of these folks are Madison County residents and they agreed to help us with this ad for um, Narcan. And we also have a social media presence on Facebook. Um, this is just an example using that ad. So that's one way we help connect with partner agencies, communities, um, and get information out. So for menu two, again, that's medications for opioid use disorder. We have um, partner agencies and some of the, the things that we're doing with the partner agencies to provide support for transportation, which is a huge barrier, let me just say that up front. It is probably the largest barrier we have in Madison County, is that we don't have really uh, any kind of an integrated public transportation system. So we have partnered with Kentucky River Foothills for bus passes, and also uh, providing cab vouchers to help get folks to their treatment appointments um, regularly. We also are providing financial support um, for folks who don't have insurance or have a gap in their coverage to pay for medication. And we also have Voices of Hope recovery coaches, which provide peer support. 
and Bluegrass Care Navigators, which provide um, case management and retention services um, that are actually stationed within um, most of our MOUD uh, agencies. The Madison County Health Department, the syringe service program, um, and also Health Now, which is a, um, a free healthcare provider in Richmond. We have recovery coaches stationed there to help link the participants to uh, treatment. We also um, are placing a bluegrass care navigator in um, drug court basically to work with the drug court participants to help get them linked to treatment and provide them with case, case management and the um, insurance navigation services. And we're also working with probation and parole and providing telephonic um, peer support to participants. We have SMART recovery meetings and SMART is self-management and recovery training. So we have SMART recovery and then we also have SMART friends and family. The friends and family meetings are to support the friends and the loved ones of someone who has an opioid use disorder or a substance use disorder because they need help and support and tools um, to be able you know, to cope on their own but also to support their loved one. And the SMART Recovery Meeting is going to start being hosted in person at the Dry Dock, which is the clubhouse in Madison County that's in Richmond. Uh, we also have Kentucky Open. That's the Kentucky Overdose Prevention and Education Network. This is um, headed up by our uh, treatment team, so our addiction psychiatrists, physicians, um, lead up these live Zoom sessions. They're live, but they're on Zoom virtual sessions uh, pretty much every Thursday on a variety of topics that relate to opioid use disorder and substance use. Um, those also provide uh, continuing education credits for several um, professional fields. So menu three is safe prescribing and disposal pretty straightforward, um, except for the academic detailing part. If you're like me, I had no clue what that was. Um, so the best way that it was explained to me that made sense, if you think of the drug rep model that kind of got us where we are with the opioid <laughs> epidemic, it basically takes that model, but instead of someone, you know, trying to do like a cliff note version of a particular drug and sell that drug, we have, um, academic detailing pharmacists at UK that are providing education. So they're providing the most recent evidence-based um, education materials to professionals, pharmacists, dentists, um, um, MP, uh, nurse practitioners, um, pharmacy techs. They're providing information to them in a way that's easily digestible, that connects directly to their field. And they also have, um, those are, live Zoom sessions, and they can earn um, continuing education credit for their fields. And there's also uh, additional education modules that people can access like offline in, in addition to those live sessions. We have medication disposal um, program where we're partnering with pharmacies. Um, Abby handed out, uh, we have a disposal card that has all of the safe disposal medication locations in Madison County, and there are several pharmacies in Berea. So we are actually installing these med safe disposal units at no charge in partnering pharmacies um, to be able uh, to receive any kind, basically any medication um, to dispose of it in a safe way. This is just an example of our um, Healing Community Study Madison County specific website. Um, the interactive map uh, shows resources so you can hover over and it will tell you like where a pharmacy is, that's a safe disposal location, where um, an MOUD treatment agency is located. So that's interactive and it specifically points out MedSafe Pharmacy here in Berea. And let's see, how much time do we have left? I think I'm probably there, yes? Yeah, all right. Well, I have a couple of other videos that are for a communication campaign. 
And what I will do, I will um, attach the links. We have a Healing Community Study YouTube channel where you can go in and see um, videos of people who are actually in recovery right now themselves and talking about their stories, also giving uh, tips and information to people to um, address challenges as they enter recovery, try to stay in recovery. And zooming through in the field, there's some of our folks um, at the jail, at the Bria's, Bria Farmer's Market. Um, we also have a, a learning collaborative um, that anyone can access. Um, the one that's coming up this month in October features um, a first responder leave behind program. As I mentioned, Madison County EMS. Carlos is fantastic. If you don't know Carlos um, Coyle, who is the director of our Madison County EMS, um, he was instrumental in getting um, a overdose education and naloxone distribution leave behind program started. And the last one, um, we just have, uh, we were featured in a WKYT Addiction in the Bluegrass series. So I can provide some information to where you can access that link. Um, Dr. Carrie Oser, our criminal justice lead, um, was interviewed along with um, Lucas Todd, our Voices of Hope recovery coach, who is in the Madison County Jail. And the Madison County Jail was featured, like as a whole. So they have a lot of things going on um, to really help folks in, in recovery, to get into recovery, provide resources, retention, um, whole network of services. It's really amazing how open our jail is here to, to all of these different types of programs. That was a lot of information. Um, so I'm sorry about that. I feel like I just drove a freight train all over this room um, with stuff about the study. But if you have any questions or have any follow-up, phone calls, Zoom, Abby and I are happy to come and talk with anybody or chat on the phone. And like I said, I'll provide links to these things so you can access the videos yourself and email that to you, Mr. Fraley. If you don't mind, that would be great. Yes. And we do have time for a few questions for Carrie and Abby. If okay, sure. anyone has questions about their work and while people are thinking if they have questions, yes. uh, I do want to thank both of you for the work that you're doing in Madison County and specifically here in Berea uh, to try to address the, the drug issue and make things better. So uh, we appreciate you providing the information and, and for uh, catching me at the Spoon, Spoon Bread Festival. Yes. So let me tell you well, about what we're you. doing in Madison County. So thank it's, you. All, it's good to know that there are people out there who care. And I think the message to anybody out there who may need help is that there is help available. There is. There's help through you guys. There's help through our social services coordinator. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have one of the med safe vaults at the Brea Police Department in yes. City Hall. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the message to anybody is that there, there's hope and there's help. So if you need help, ask. Absolutely. Questions for uh, Carrie and for Abby? I'll let Abby. I was going to simply just add on, I know this is a lot of, like Carrie said, this is a whole lot of information <laughs> because it's such a large study um, to digest within, you know, 10 minutes. However, I will say, um, if anything, if at the very least, if I know, um, I just want to share, I have lived this struggle of seeing, of being in active addiction. That's why I'm so passionate about the work that I do today. That's what led me to apply to, for this job three years ago. Um, thankfully, I have um, worked in, I was, thankfully blessed um, enough to have a chance at naloxone, Narcan. You all see in the flyers. Narcan saved my life um, almost seven years ago okay, from a, a very near fatal overdose. And um, when I say in my family, all chains were broken. There was a, the rope was at the end. It was there. Um, so I am walking living proof of recovery. It is possible no matter how far, how deep in, um, have hope. And I also see and understand the perspective of 
ha being a loved one and having someone else now after the fact after I have recovered and been in recovery myself and in remission from opioid use disorder which again as Alex had mentioned it was a combination of being prescribed opioids at a very young age and um, I'm just a huge advocate for education prevention and for believing in a second chance you may or may not have caught the uh, photograph of my daughter holding a sign at the blonde girl the little blonde at yes. the farmer's market doesn't look a thing <laughs> like me but she's three and i live an amazing life now but um just over the summer was allowed to set up at the farm bria farmer's market have a great relationship with them and i provided overdose education and naloxone distribution there because again one of our menu strategies is to just educate as many community members as possible and encourage them to carry Narcan because you never know when or where it may happen. And um, again, my little girl had the photograph of uh, save a, carry Narcan, save a life. I give lifesavers out, literal lifesaver mints out everywhere I go. So uh, anywho, that's my summary. And I very, we appreciate you all having yes, us here. We do. And we can come, I say we, it's usually Abby because she oversees it, but come to anyone's place of business, agency, event, and do the overdose education and naloxone distribution to get free naloxone to anybody who's interested. Thank you, ladies. We appreciate Thank you being you here with us. Thank you. All right. The um, next item on the agenda is Housing Authority uh, Board of Commissioners appointment. And this evening I'm requesting council approval of the appointment of Catherine Cassie Alexander to a four year term on the Bria Housing Authority Board of Commissioners as a resident member. The number one and number two, I'm requesting approval of Linda LaForce as an alternate resident member to the Bria Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. Both residents have volunteered and meet all the requirements for appointment and they're eager to serve. Is there a motion, we'll do one on each, is there a motion to approve the appointment of Catherine Cassie Alexander to the Housing Authority Board of Commissioners? So moved. Mr. Cottle, is there a second? The centers, thank you. Any discussion on the motion to appoint Catherine Cassie Alexander to the Housing Authority Board of Commissioners? Seeing none, we'll move to a voice vote. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. Thank you. Next, I would request a motion to approve Linda LaForce as an alternate resident member to the Berea Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. Is there a so motion? Moved. Motion by Mr. Payne. Is there a second? I'll second. By Ms. Startsman. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll move to a voice, voice vote. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. The motion carries. Thank you very much, and thanks for uh, Kathy, Cassie and Linda for being willing to serve on the Housing Authority as resident uh, representatives. Next item on the agenda is change order number 02. This is on the Berea Folk Center chinking and staining project, and I'll recognize City Administrator Rose Beverly. Rose, you have the floor. Hello. So change order number two um, for 12 five gallons of chinky material at $242 per bucket. Um, we had a previous change order as well, and I, I'm sure you guys kind of know more about the project than I do coming into it late in the game. Um, Sean did uh, update me that um, this will complete the project, and um, even with this ad addition, we will still be under the nearest closest bid from this bid. So. Um, I think that summarizes it, unless there's any questions I can't answer. <laughs> so the change order is for um, $2,904, making the revised contract price $30,296.50. Is that correct? That is correct. Is there a motion, motion to approve? Motion to approve. Change order by Mr. Little. Is there a second? Second. By Ms. Wilson. Is there any discussion on the motion to approve change order number 02? Ms. Sinter, you have before. Uh, just as a uh, point 
I think we need to be real careful going forward. I don't know how far under the the high bid that this has ended up being, but it's about double what the original bid was from, and we questioned it heavily at the time and were assured that it was good bid. So just I, I just want to say let's be careful going forward. Good point. I'll go to Mr. Little and come back to Mr. Davis. Mr. Little. On this bid, I'm very familiar with it. We took the original, the lowest bidder down there. They was about 40000 cheaper than the second bid. And with this change over here, we're still saving a little over $30,000 from the original bid. And we just couldn't, we paid no more on labor now. The labor, they had to eat their labor. They lost, they lost big time on this deal here. And to, to make our job, we needed to put this extra chink in an extra stain. So that's what it is. But we're still about 32000 under what the high bid or the low, you know, the next bid. There's just two bids on it. So it, this is a good change order. I, it really is. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. And I'll come to Mr. Davis. Yeah, of course, sir. Um, before Rose took over and um, – Mr. Gregory was still here, and we had the last change order. Uh, Mr. Gregory said there would be no more. This was it. Um, you know, he came to the well once, and we, um, you know, agreed to pay it. Uh, coming to the well twice, I'm, I'm not for it. So that's my comment. Thank you, sir. Other uh, questions or comments on the motion to approve change order number zero two mr collie you have the floor sir has this material been used already i will ask city administrator What's that, Steve? has the material that we're doing a change order for been used already is it already on the building my understanding is it is but i'm not sure that was my understanding as well. I think the building's about done. It should be about done, yeah. Or maybe not every, because they may be finishing it up, but um, he did specify, as Jerry said, that this would be an, enough to finish the project and that, um, oh, I I just got a text. I love Sean at home. Um, <laughs> and that's why I'm watching my phone and I've been communicating with him. But um, so he had said more of it was on order. And I, I do understand two from what i was hearing i think some of it the cost was a lot more than anticipated because of covid shortages so that may be a part of played a part maybe there were some issues with bidding as well and he he did say that um as we know that there was no additional fee there were no additional fees for labor it was just the supplies so i generally agree with jim <laughs> write it down jim except except Here's my only concern. If we don't do it, the building won't be finished. And then we're gonna have to bid it again to do it again. Mm -hmm. Because it, yeah, but I think, I don't think that, I don't think that we wanna go down that path of, cause this person's already lost apparently. And I, I can understand that and I appreciate that. And that's bad, that's, that's not on us. I get it, I get it, but when it boils down to it i'm kind of with theresa we need to make a note and make sure that when this happens again that we but i it concerns me if we don't do it that it won't be done properly and i'm not that's not a comment on this person because i don't i don't know the person but um i i think i'm for passing it i agree with the idea that uh what jerry mentioned of you know it is a good change order it's still well below what the other bid was but i it does give me massive heartburn that this is another change order to what we said was it i'm gonna say one more. yeah i mean i think that's the one thing that's challenging as a council member is because we all remember when the bid opening happened and the recommendation that we received was so low, it was a, a bit of a red flag. But it's also really challenging because I'm not an expert in chinking log cabin buildings. And so we have a limited amount of information that we we're using to make that decision. And we're really counting on the city administrator to, to really 
have conversations. I feel right, like like if if Teresa's talking about how can we avoid this kind of thing happening again, you know, it's it's just frustrating because it raised red flags for many of us when we saw that, you know, amount. And I really see Jerry's point about the fact that like we're still getting a good deal, you know, compared to the other uh, bid. It's just hard to know how how can we make a note of this and have this not happen again. I guess is what I'm saying. Like it's just the it's a, it feels like it's kind of subjective. Like the previous state administrator was like, this looks like it's going to work out okay, and we have to take his word for it Let me, or her word for it. We have know? several people with comments. Let me come to to Jerry because he was there with uh, in the beginning. Then I want to come to Ron. I'll come back to this side of the room. Jerry, go right ahead. I've been there since day one. Gregory, David Gregory, I, and Donnie Davison, we call the people that bid this low bid in, the mother and the son, and I talked to them personally. I said, you know, can you do this? They said, yeah. Well, guess what? It, it's, it's sort of their fault in a way, but then they got in these logs and they didn't understand, I don't think, they had to take the old chinking out. They thought they was gonna go over top of the chinkings. Well, guess what? When they wanted it pulled out, and I don't know how what the contract said, I don't know about that, but when they took the old chinking out, it took twice as much or more to fill the logs back up. And then some of them had rotted, you couldn't see it, and it got really complicated. That's all I'm gonna say. It, and, and, and it, a change order most times profit. That's what everybody laughs and says. You got a change order, that's profit. Well, these poor people, they, they, this is a loss, okay? I mean, I, I'm not, I don't even know them. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know, but the whole secret to it is, I think we wanted the chicken pulled out farther than they ever thought it was going to be pulled out, and then and then they wanted it all tucked out, and 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 it, it's a good change order. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm let me, done. Let me go to Ron, and then I'll come back to well, the center. I really think we still possibly may have another change order because I think there's a checklist that somebody inspected. And has it been done? I don't think so. I think. Uh, they still some work to be done. It should have been done before we done this year. Well, I don't know, it's Jerry. This is that 25 gallon uh, the chicken we bought from six months ago. Or, I understand all that. But but has anybody inspected? You know, you and I went down there and walked around it. Well, but and, it, that was a good question for the administration to find out. I well, don't know what it's been. I wouldn't I wouldn't have done a change order to it till it was the last. No. Yeah, but you weren't doing the change order. That's right. What we'll do is we'll have Rose get back to you on that, Ron, if that's all right. Just that's fine. inspections. I do want to recognize John Payne. He's been wanting to get a word in edgewise, and then I'm seeing Jim on the end with his light on. John, and, go right ahead. And this is, this is kind of for you, Jerry. Since you've, among all of us, you've probably spent the most time observing the process and um, their work ethic and also – having just recently finished a uh, a library renovation project with mixed results um now granted there were there were things that they that came up unexpected and that's why we're dealing with change orders how well a job would you say that they have done thus far would you say that they've that they've done that they've done a good job based on what you've seen well, I don't really know anything about chink and log cabin, okay? <laughs> I, I, so, so I couldn't sit here and tell you if, if, if I, I didn't have nothing to do with inspections. The only thing I made a comment, we wanted to make sure that we got enough stain and enough chinking. We would have been crazy to sit there and let the stain be cut short because and the chinking. Now, I, I, don't, I don't know anything about a log, log cabin, so I don't know. <laughs> It, you know, it, it looks like a log cabin to me, John, okay? That's all I know. It's got waves and so I don't, I don't. Let me come back to Jim. Jim, you have the floor, sir. Let me think for a minute. Sure thing. Any other questions or comments? Steve, you have the floor. I would like to know, to Ronnie's point, have we done the punch list? 
if we haven't done the punch list, can we just wait? I'd rather do one more change order and be done. I'm not saying that I'm not going to vote for it. I'm going to prove this. I'm fine approving this. If the people who are doing this job are watching this, I'm going to approve this. I can't speak for anybody else. But I would rather do this at one time and be finished. But, but Bruce? Let me, let me go to Teresa and come back to you, Ron. Teresa, you have the floor. I was pretty much going to say what, what Steve has said. My question initially was not in any way indicating that I, I won't vote to approve the extra expenditure. My point is let's be careful when we get a bid that's that low in in the future that 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 was just that, that was just my point but i mean the works the work's done and i'm assuming that that this materials was billed to the city to save sales tax correct that i'm not sure but of. at at any rate whatever we'll we'll it's it, it's like steve said it's not that we're not going to approve it it's that we need to be finished before we finish let me let me let me recognize Rose and I'll come back to Ron because I promised him next. Go right I, ahead. We're recognizing Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Sean said this would complete the project after he inspected it. So he did inspect it and he was confident that this would be he, he enough that to that this would that this change order would complete the project. It will complete that is what he he inspected it and he said this change order would complete the project. So they won't be he Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Rose. Let me come to Ron. Well, what I was going to say, we need to go ahead and pay this 25 gallon because, or 25 buckets that we bought because it's been two months or longer. Mm -hmm. and that's, we've had that bill, I think. Further discussion on the motion to approve change order number 02. Further discussion. Seeing none, we'll move to a voice vote. All in favor of approving the motion to approve change order number 02, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. no. I'll record the vote as seven, to one, seven in favor, one opposed. Motion carries, and change order number 02 is approved. The next item on the agenda is ordinance number 25-2021, one-time waiver of utility late payments. Uh, as Mr. Gilbert comes to the microphone, I will note that there was a work session on that prior to the council meeting. Mr. Gilbert, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mayor. I'll summarize ordinance number 25-2021 as follows. Whereas the city, the Berea City Code includes provisions in section 31.105 sewer, 32.103 water, and 32.104 electric, requiring the imposition of late fees on delinquent utility payments. And whereas the mayor and the city council have determined it would be in good public policy to provide for a potential one-time waiver of utility rate payments due to the COVID-19 pandemic and current economic conditions. And whereas it is necessary to amend the code of ordinances to achieve this objective, now, therefore, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Berea, Kentucky, that the Code of Ordinances of the City of Berea be revised to provide for a one-time waiver of utility late payments. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. And again, that is a first reading. Uh, per past practice, I'll open the floor up for any discussion on the first uh, reading of Ordinance Number 25-2021. John Payne, you have the floor, John. Um, as I stated in the work session, and as somebody who definitely has paid between the 10th and the 20th on multiple occasions, including within the last 12 months, um, if the purpose of the ordinance is to provide, um, is provide the minor relief of that penalty once a year, I think it should be irrelevant whether or not they have in the past paid that 10 percent additional penalty sometime during the previous year especially if they have to ask proactively for that one-time relief and i th think it would be a minor change in section 1c um, to accomplish that we could do that as a if you wanted to offer an amendment at the next meeting at the second reading you needed a, a, a motion to amend a second, and that would be subject to discussion in a vote. 
That's how you would handle that. Any additional discussion on the first reading of ordinance number 25-2021? All right, seeing none, we'll move right into the city administrator's report. Rose, you have the floor again. Okay, so we're gonna start um, with, we have a budget overage to report for the Cherry Road project. Um, according to the budget procedures ordinance, the council must be alerted when a budget line item goes over by the greater of 10% or $5,000. Um, the design services for Cherry Road drainage will put the line item 010-1035-56610 over budget by $8,855.33. Um, this was from store, storm water calculations from the new engineering firm Thoroughbred and uh, had also included some drainage issues they worked on for Chestnut Court. Um, so had to report on that and then um, wanted to let everybody know that the Kentucky Guild of Artists and Craftsmen Fair, Fall Fair is this weekend Saturday and Sunday at the Indian Fort Trail um, so I'm looking forward to going and seeing that I'm excited about it and um, we will have the trick or treat on Sunday October 31st in the park it will be drive through like it was last year uh, due to COVID we had some recommendations from the health department on how to do that again this year with the high numbers so um, they did decide to do a drive-through and um, the chestnut court project is wrapping up we thought we'd let you guys know that uh, they finished working on the apron today so um, a lot of things wrapping up since I've been here which is pretty exciting to see all the hard work that everyone has been putting into all these projects so um, I don't have a whole lot to report on today just because I'm just stepping in and taking on a lot of other things that I'm trying to work on. So um, for today, that's all I have. I got okay, any question. questions for Rose? I'll start with Mr. Codlin and come to Mr. Little. Go right ahead, sir. We need a motion to approve that overage, correct? To ign the acknowledgement? Um, you do not. That would go in the next, The I think it amendment. goes into the amended budget, Steve, amended budget. when we do yep. the First Amendment. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Little. Uh, Rose, I understand you're right. This is on engineering, right? This is on engineering. What was the projects it went over on? Do you know? Uh, the, the, it was for that line item. Um, it was the Cherry Road project and some engineering for the Chestnut Court project. And I think it, it just, they didn't know that they had to do that um, you, part of it as well. You said for the Cherry Road project and the... Cherry Road drainage. Cherry Road drainage, Pavilion. sorry. Yeah. in the farmer's market lot mm -hmm. yes. okay i understand i know what the yeah. deal was sorry i, know, I, I know what wrote was. that down wrong <laughs> thank you jerry any additional uh questions or comments for rose jim you have the floor so i'm assuming jerry and the mayor and rose if you know that was our doings not something they that's correct okay mm -hmm. thank you. it it i don't know about the cherry road project why they they got there was a discussion about a, a drain on the end of it, and I don't know who's, I don't know, Jim, whose it was. I, I didn't get that much involved. And then on the Ford lot up there, as we discussed before, there was part of it. It, it's, it was, it, it, it's probably okay. Well, the Chestnut Court was our, I know that was. I think it, it was, it, I think it, we rechanged the design on the end of it. I think we did, Jim. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Any other questions or comments for the city administrator? Mr. Terry, you have the floor. Uh, Rose, I know you don't have an answer for this, but <laughs> I, I'd like for you to bring uh, our superintendent of utilities up and, explain, and let him tell about extending the, the dam for another year before we put it out for bids. If he doesn't care, a lot of people don't know that. With that objection, I'll recognize the... Uh, Utilities General Manager Kevin Howard for an update on the Owsley Fork Reservoir Dam project. Kevin, you have the floor. No pressure. Push it. Thank you, Mayor, and good afternoon. Uh, good evening, Council. So, uh, as Mr. Terrell said, uh, the last time I gave an update, uh, we were working with the state NRCS uh, office on, on the 90% uh, design submittal. Uh, if you remember on the timeline, September the 30th was the original timeline for, for this 90% design submittal and approval. 
uh, when we when we done the submittal, I think it was 192 comments that came back. Obviously, we were going to have to work with uh, with the state and RCS to work through some of those that were non-critical, and we've requested a meeting with the uh, National Design Center in Fort Worth to address those comments that were critical. Um, so since the last update, what has happened and working with the state NRCS was they recommended going ahead and doing the extension on, on design. Um, the engineering team and the design team, uh, we felt three to six months under their recommendation. We did do a 12 month extension and the thought being, you know, ask for more than what you anticipate. Um, we agreed to that with the with the assumption that we were going to do everything we could to get it to construction as quick as we could. Um, a lot of this is going to be our meeting with the national folks to address the uh, critical comments, in particular one comment that, that we really uh, had some contention on. And uh, as soon as we get through that issue, we're, we're ready to move forward with a resubmittal which at that time the national team would anticipate approval and then the state and RCS would work with us on the non-critical comments and have it ready for construction. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the update. Okay. All right. Next item on the agenda uh, is mayor's comments. I'll begin with a couple of notes on personnel. I know that the council had requested notification anytime we had a retirement and we did have one of our department heads retired and he was sent off in a grand fashion uh, last week. Donnie Davidson, our public works director, retired effective September the 30th. And uh, they really did have a really nice luncheon for him. There was a big crowd there, many of you, uh, you know, folks from all over were there for, for Donnie and uh, we certainly wish him and his family the best. And also congratulations to uh, Roy Curtis. Roy is one of the, um, one of the, uh, leads one of the supervisors on maintenance and he was a uh, interim has been appointed the interim director of public works so congratulations to Roy and we appreciate him step stepping up to fill that critical role um, the other thing that I'll mention is we do have an event that uh, tourism is working on with the forestry uh, outreach center at Indian Fort it is uh, tree week and this is a, a little graphic on what was shared with us uh, Tree Week runs October the 9th through the 16th this year, um, and this is a project through the University of Kentucky. They chose the city of Georgetown, the city of Hazard, city of Paducah, uh, Lexington, and Berea uh, as communities to have events in this year, and it's called the Urban Forest Initiative Presents Tree Week. Um, I know that there are activities that are planned, and that is all on the tourism website, Donna, if I'm not mistaken which is visitberea.com. Uh, they'll begin with actually a, some events on Friday of this week, a little bit early. And then on Saturday the 9th, we'll have a kickoff at 10 o'clock at Tilly Park where there'll be a tree planting. And I think that there's a group of students that are gonna adopt that tree uh, just to look at how the trees benefit our uh, urban environment in our city. So look for uh, activities on that on the tourism website and we encourage people to participate. That concludes my comments. We'll next move to uh, council comments and begin with Mr. Davis. No comment. Thank you, sir. Next, we'll move to Mr. Terrell. Uh, no comment. Thank you, sir. Next, we'll go to Mr. Payne. Well, um, we had our uh, parks meeting last week, and then yesterday we had a um, parks master plan meeting. One of the things that came up is the uh, online survey um, Mayor, if we can get that online survey put back on the uh, the city's pages, Facebook, and so forth, we can. Do um, the more input we get, the the better our master plan is going to be. I went ahead and just uh, added them back to my my personal social media pages. I also wanted to bring up the uh, Guild Fair, which is going to be Saturday and Sunday at Indian Fort Theater. Looks like it's going to be running from 10 to 6 Saturday, 10 to 5 Sunday. Uh, we kind of forget that uh, after Spoonbread, but the Kentucky Guild Fair is one of our 
our large fairs and go down enjoy the uh enjoy the food the entertainment check out all the booths and that's all i have thank you john next we'll move to mr little jerry you have four two or three things uh I, I feel like in the next few weeks, I don't know when, that we ought to have the police chief come in and give us an update on the department after we've uh, the hazardous duty pay started. I'd like for the, you know, just to get a count of it and what's going on, how's it helped or whatever. I think that'd be good for the, just put, you know, when we can get to it. And uh, one more thing. I didn't understand. I like what Corey said a while ago. I didn't understand you could prepay your electric. I didn't know you could come in and and, and put a prepayment in on it. I mean, and and you know, it's like to me that'd be a great thing for somebody that uh, on these prepaid meters now. I know people does that. They'll come in, put twenty five or fifty dollars down on a prepaid meter. But I didn't realize we had that option here. So. This like to me that'd really be a big help for somebody that, uh, and Bruce, you're gonna have that tar and us be put on. We gonna we we are and and Ron had mentioned that there's a tire yeah. amnesty day where you can take tires to dispose of them. We looked really hard on the website. We can't. And I did, but we couldn't well, find it. But we, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The, I think the one o'clock Is it just tars, Ronnie, or what else? So I'm, I'm going to ask our city administrator to do a little homework on that and see if we can get that on the website so, on, on how people dispose of tires. It is already. So it's on the city website and Facebook page. So there we have it. If anybody's going to use tars laying around, that's a really good time to get rid of them because you, it's hard to get rid of a used tar. So, so that, that's all I've got. Thank you, sir. Next, we'll move to Miss Startsman. Katie, you have the floor. Thanks. Um, I hadn't considered what. John Payne had said about the BMU and the um, waiving of late fees and you know when he was talking about that it reminded me also of when we were doing the micro grants for small businesses who are affected by COVID and I feel like sometimes with some of these relief programs we're thinking so carefully about how to keep people from taking advantage or something we're really preventing the folks who could really use the, the benefit from being able to participate. And so I, I don't know logistically, um, you know, how we could do it, but what John said really does resonate with me because I think if you have a perfect um, utility record, um, it's less likely that you're gonna need to claim that. And I have to say, like, I just put, frankly, you all, you know, being able to put my bills on auto pay was one of the definitions I had of success when I started my business. Because before that, we had been living paycheck to paycheck and my bills were not on auto pay. And so I really think it's easy for us to forget what so many of the folks in our community are living with. And that includes folks like me who are on council and like John. And so I think I would really love, I think it's a good customer service. Um, to, to extend that forgiveness to people who might not have a perfect bill pay record. And I understand it, it could be complicated, but I also want to think of like the humanity and the empathy behind th this, this work. So yeah, and that's, those are not prepared comments. <laughs> Thank you. Next we'll move to Ms. Centers. You have the floor. Thank you. I too want to, uh, tell everybody who can to get out to the Guild Fair. It's the 60th anniversary of, of the Kentucky Guild of Crafts and Fall Fair. And uh, that, that's, that's kind of a, a big deal. Some of us were small and some of us not yet thought of. I was small. <laughs> uh, somebody already mentioned Tree Week. And I also wanted to mention uh, Priscilla and the Parks uh, Department are putting on movie night again this year on the 15th which will be not this coming Friday but next Friday and they'll be showing Hocus Pocus again and I think she suggested that folks get there about 6 30 movie starts right after 7 something like that okay that, that'll be a fun time for lots of folks and um, uh, also the parks department has craft session uh, going on 
That's still going on Saturday down behind the pool. Okay, so uh, get the kids out on a summer fall day and let them let them do something constructive. And Kevin, thank you so much. That was good news. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, I, I appreciate our speakers from from the drug abuse program this afternoon too. Thank you all. Thank you, Teresa. Next, we'll move to Corjane Wilson. You have the floor. No comment. Thank you, ma'am. And tonight we'll wrap up with Mr. Cottle. You have the floor, sir. Um, some good news to report. Kimba did their mountain bike um, clinics this weekend at our new Silver Creek Mountain Bike Park. And I spoke to the uh, president of that yesterday to see how it went. And they could not be uh, have been happier with the way that that uh, worked out and also they were very appreciative old kentucky campground gave them some space so that they could have their uh, instructors stay there um, overnight if they chose to and so they had 40 people on both days which um, i don't know the exact breakdown of people from berea and people outside but i'm pretty confident most of those people came from outside of berea uh, and they used our uh, restaurants and hotels and things like that so what a, what a great program, and thank you to Kimba for putting that on. Um, on the same kind of line of, of, of thought, we did have our uh, parks um, opening meeting for the strategic plan last night, and <clears throat> I have to say I'm so excited about, about that work, um, and not because of me or anything to do with that, but that's an impressive group. Um, there's a lot of people who touch a lot of lives that are on that committee um, and the thoughts and the ideas um, that were generated just in the first night when really I don't even, I don't even think we were supposed to do that um, but it it led to some conversations and ideas that frankly I'd never thought of um, is was never on my radar and um, and I'm really excited to see where that ends up because I think it really gives us a roadmap uh, to see what the city wants. On that same note, um, if you received a mail survey, um, I think that everybody, and I'll be honest that I thought this too, assumed that everybody got a mail survey or I just missed it, and it's not. It's a statistically significant survey, which means that they did a random sampling of Berea and they sent that. So I encourage you, if you did get that uh, mail survey, it takes a little more effort than the online version, uh, um, but it does give a, a more representative view of Berea instead of just putting it out there and, and the people who um, are most likely to respond responding. So uh, I do encourage everybody to, to do that. Last note, um, thank you to Carrie and Abigail for, for coming tonight. Um, the work that they're doing is important. I would wager to bet uh, that if you have not been touched by opioid addiction uh, in your lives, you just aren't thinking about it hard enough or you just don't know. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a disease that affects so many people in our community, in our state. Um, and for so long, we've all kind of wondered, what can we do? And, and frankly, for so long, not many people have done anything. And it's so encouraging uh, to see the work that they're doing. And thank you. I, I know she kind of had to run through it there at the end, but um, it's a great presentation. And, and the work that they're doing is, is important and hopefully will move our community forward. So thank you for that. And that's all I have. Thank you, Steve. And that brings us to the end of our agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn by Mr. Payne? Is there a second by Ms. Wilson? Uh, if you would unmute your mic, all in favor of the motion to adjourn, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.